Yes, I am Mr. Kowalski and this is biology. Today we're going to start unit six. Uh, it's kind of a continuation of unit five. Unit five we talked about DNA uh, and its structure and its discovery and how we make more of it. Today we're really going to start talking about what we can use that DNA for, which specifically is protein synthesis. Uh, protein synthesis is how we make the proteins that cause us to do the things that that we do and to look the way that we look and everything about us basically. So today we're going to cover these three topics. How does DNA control our traits? How are proteins made in the cell? And then what is RNA? Now if you remember back from when we talked about cells, we talked a little bit about protein synthesis and we said, you know, where the protein was made and uh, where it goes once it's made, but we didn't talk about the process of actually making it, which is what we're going to focus on here uh, for the next couple weeks. Okay. But today we're going to specifically talk about transcription and RNA. <clears throat> so, how does the DNA control our traits? Well, believe it or not, not all of your DNA is useful. Remember we talked about in each one of your cells, if we strung all the DNA of all your chromosomes out for just one cell, it would be about six feet long. Well, really, we only need about 2% of that to actually code for what makes up you and I. Uh, both outside and inside. Uh, the rest of the 98% is really kind of junk DNA. It really doesn't do anything other than it's kind of a placeholder. Uh, without it, things get moved around and put in the wrong places. So we kind of need it, but it doesn't really serve a purpose. The rest of that DNA, that 2% that's important, we call those genes. And those are small sections of the DNA that actually code for a specific trait or specific protein that's going to make a trait. Uh, so like on our blue DNA strand here, just this small orange section is actually what we would call a gene and this is the only part that's actually useful and actually codes for anything about us. The rest of the blue would just be junk DNA, a placeholder. Uh, so for example, there's a, this gene might be for insulin deficiency or making insulin. Uh, People with type 1 diabetes, like my niece and nephew, uh, they are insulin deficient. Uh, they have type 1 diabetes, so therefore they have this gene uh, that causes them to be insulin deficient. So when you think of genes and traits, don't just think of like blonde hair, red hair, or uh, blue eyes, green eyes, that type of stuff. Those are, yes, physical characteristics, but we're also talking about things that are on the inside, like the creation of hormones and things like that uh, when we talk about genes and traits. Okay? So... Uh, only uh, genes can code for traits, meaning they, they can tell us what kind of traits we're going to have, but they can't actually make the traits. The traits are determined by our protein. Uh, that's actually what's going to be determining what we look like uh, and how we act and, and the hormones inside of us and things like that. Those are all determined by proteins. Now, if you remember when we talked about proteins, we said that proteins remember, they had those seven characters or seven, excuse me, uh, functions uh, like transporting materials, contracting, uh, for movement, uh, fighting infections, storing materials, building structures, and storing, uh, speeding up chemical reactions like enzymes. But those only are created based on the small sections of DNA, like here you can see gene 1 and gene 2. Uh, whatever code you have, the G's, A's, T's, and C's, whatever order they're in, will determine what code or what trait you have then and what protein gets made. So how exactly are proteins made? And that's what we're going to be covering today. They're made during protein synthesis, which again, we've talked about before, but we haven't really gone over the process of it. But it's a two-part process that uses DNA as a code to link together amino acids. Which, and if you remember back from unit two, we learned that amino acids are the building blocks of protein. So if I link together uh, certain amino acids in a certain order, I get a protein that makes up your insulin deficiency, or that gives you your blonde hair, or that gives you your uh, brown eyes, and things like that. Okay. Uh, the two parts are transcription, which is making RNA from DNA, so we go from DNA to RNA, and translation, which is when we take that RNA and we change it into a protein. Today we're just going to focus on transcription, uh, and in order to do that, we're going to have to learn something about this guy over here, this RNA. So far we know what DNA is, deoxyribonucleic acid, but we're going to learn about its cousin over here, RNA. What is RNA? It's just ribonucleic acid. And that's where the RNA comes from. Now, look at this picture. There are three big differences between RNA and DNA. I'll give you a second. You might want to pause, see if you can come up with what those three differences are before I point them out. The first one, pretty obvious, is that we have an R sugar here instead of a D like we had for DNA. That stands for ribose. So this sugar is just ribose sugar, not deoxyribose. The second, you probably notice this brown guy here, uracil. Uh, we've replaced thymine. Remember, it used to be A, G, T, and C. Now it's A, G, U, and C. So now U will bond with A. Uh, the thymine does not exist on the RNA molecule. And then the third, and probably the most obvious, is that RNA is just a single strand instead of a double strand like its DNA cousin. Okay? So it's single strand made of ribose sugar, and thymine is replaced by uracil. So U instead of T. 
Now there's three types of RNA. All three are important for protein synthesis. The first one is called mRNA. The M stands for messenger, and its job is to carry the DNA template or DNA code out of the nucleus. We always leave the DNA inside the nucleus. Uh, remember, the nucleus is there to protect the DNA, to, to prevent any harm coming to it via uh, UV rays, chemicals, and radiation, which we all learned uh, creates mutations. So it's, as long as that DNA stays in the nucleus, we have a better chance of preventing mutations. So mRNA is going to have the job of carrying DNA's message. That's why we call it mRNA. tRNA is actually going to be our transfer one. It carries a, one single amino acid, and that amino acid that it carries can differ, and which one it carries then depends on this little set of, uh, of uh, codons down here, excuse me, anticodons down here, or A's, G's, T's, and U, A's, G's, U's, and C's, excuse me. Uh, whatever code it has down here determines which amino acid it carries. But we'll learn more about that when we talk about translation. And then the third type is called rRNA, which is a pirate's favorite RNA. rRNA. Haha, <laughs> get it? <laughs> but anyway, it's, it actually makes the ribosome. Remember we talked about uh, ribosomes, how they don't have a membrane. That's because they're just made of coiled up RNA, a uh, special kind of RNA, like I said, which is called ribosomal RNA. So there would be a section of RNA that makes the top part or the large subunit and then another section at the bottom that makes this smaller subunit. So it's two uh, RNA sections that make up this brown ribosome. But again, all three are needed for protein synthesis. So let's talk about how proteins are made. Remember that first step is called transcription. Transcription is making RNA from DNA. It takes place in the nucleus because that's where the DNA is stored. And then it starts working at a certain section of the DNA. It's called TATA section, which we also know as the promoter. Now, the RNA polymerase, uh, if you remember that word, that cause, that's because it sounds a lot like DNA polymerase. We learned during replication, DNA polymerase makes more DNA. So RNA polymerase is obviously going to make RNA. RNA polymerase actually does two things while it works. The first one is it's actually going to unwind and open up the DNA helica uh, helix like we just saw it do. So that's the first thing, and we'll watch it happen one more time. There it comes. So here's the polymerase and it's opened up making a straight line and then secondly it's going to match the RNA nucleotides to its DNA. Now you'll notice we said RNA so now these A's instead of being bonded with T's uh, they're bonded with U's. Remember that U stands for uracil. So again RNA polymerase makes RNA just on one side instead of two Okay, and then it also has the job of opening up that small section of DNA at the promoter in order to start the process. So it starts at the promoter and that's where the RNA polymerase will bind. Step two involves the terminator. Okay. Transcription will continue. Uh, the RNA polymerase will keep working until it reaches a section of DNA known as the terminator. That's where it tells it to basically stop working. So that newly formed mRNA then is going to leave the nucleus through a nuclear pore. And then the RNA polymerase will let go of the DNA. And then that little small section will close up. Okay. Now you'll see here if you actually have capabilities, you can click on that little animation. It'll take you to this thing. Okay, and it's just the same thing we just saw in that GIF, but it's just as a flash player, so you need flash in order to do this. But again, so we have our RNA polymerase right here. Here's our promoter section. Again, I told you TATA -T is going to be where he starts, and then here's our DNA. So he's actually going to bind to that section. He'll open up a small piece of DNA, and then he'll start making his RNA match to the DNA on one side. Now, if you notice, there's no T's. Okay, the T's are replaced by U's. So now this is called mRNA because it's going to carry our M It's going to carry our message and it stops at the terminator, this section down here, that's where the polymerase will let go. And now we have our DNA still put together, nothing's changed about our DNA, still healthy and good. Okay, but now we also have a strand of mRNA. Okay, so again, our main idea is how does DNA control our traits? It makes a code to make a protein. Proteins are made via a two-part process, which includes transcription and translation. And then mRNA, excuse me, what is RNA? RNA is ribo, ribonucleic acid. Uh, it's a single strand, uracil replaces thiamine, and it's made of ribose sugar instead of DNA. Okay. Uh, now, we're going to do a little activity next. Uh, we're going to talk about the different types of RNA in a little bit more detail. Feel free to click on the website, mrkabuski.wordpress.com, to get uh, access to those features and those worksheets. Uh, but otherwise, I'll see you next time when we talk about translation, and have a great day.